Welcome to my course electrochemical energy storage and uh, uh, this is uh, module number 2 where we are discussing definitions and measuring methods and this is lecture number 8 uh, where we will talk about certain important uh, measurements pertinent to uh, the uh, electrochemical energy storage battery uh, in terms of cyclic voltammetry, nominal voltage concept, capacity, rate performance, cyclability and uh, the um, several el electrochemical titration uh, measurement technique. So, first we will introduce uh, the electrochemical probing tool which is relevant for energy materials. Then uh, we will introduce the concept of linear sweep voltammetry and cyclic voltammetry. Then we will uh, talk about the charge discharge characteristics measurement and uh, uh, finally, galvanostatic intermittent titration technique and potentiostatic intermediate titration technique. They are abbreviated respectively as uh, GITT GIT and PITT PIT, this will be introduced. So, um, um, uh, in uh, one of my earlier lectures already uh, we talked about electrochemical probing tools, uh, uh, we talked about potentiometry and that potentiometry is usually uh, employed to find the concentration for example, of a solute in a solution and this type of measurement the potential between two electrodes is measured with a uh, high impedance voltmeter. Then uh, colorimetry that is uh, the measurement of the total amount of charge or uh, the current that is consumed in an electrochemical reaction that is measured and uh, amperometry uh, which basically we will be using uh, mostly current is measured as a function of time we call this is uh, chrono amperometry uh, and uh, it is also uh, uh, measured uh, as a function of uh, electrode potential when we will call this is voltammetry. So, uh, our measurement uh, is based on this preliminary concept which already I talked about as a part of my earlier lectures. <coughs> so, again uh, we will uh, come back to this three electrode system uh, which uh, I talked about in my earlier lectures. Uh, uh, so, in voltammetry measurement uh, simultaneously we measured uh, I versus T uh, which is chrono amperometry and uh, simultaneously we sweep uh, uh, voltage uh, or potential uh, as a function of time. So, this is potential sweep as well. So, that results uh, I versus E curve uh, and uh, this helps us uh, to recognize uh, different electrochemically active species in their behavior in a specific type of electrochemical configuration and we call this is voltammetry. So, this voltammetry, uh, voltammetry that mandates the need of three electrode and uh, current is basically measured between the working electrode and the counter electrode and potential is measured uh, between the working electrode and the reference electrode. So, uh, a potential sweep method uh, since it is being used the current as a function of potential that means, I versus E uh, is measured and obviously, it is equivalent to recording current versus time because both are uh, either being measured as a function of time or being applied in case of voltage as a function of time. So, always uh, current versus time also you can get out of this type of measurements. So, uh, first let us introduce the linear sweep voltammetry which is abbreviated as LSB and uh, one redox couple that uh, we are considering uh, in aqua solution of Fe 3 plus it takes electron to form Fe 2 plus uh, it is getting uh, reduced. Uh, so, we will have to take a predetermined window potential and which is uh, a bit arbitrary you will have to 
uh, guess depending uh, the reduction potential and uh, uh, then the potential is swept at fixed rate from that lower potential to an upper potential limit. And during this potential sweep, uh, current starts to flow and uh, that basically yields a maxima and then eventually it uh, drops um, and that creates a peak, we will show that. The physical significance of this behavior that can be understood uh, by the Nernst equation which already I introduced earlier, uh, here n is equal to 1. Uh, for this particular couple and E is the applied potential and E0 is the standard electrode potential for this couple. And uh, uh, you know that uh, this negative uh, sign is uh, actually positive because uh, this I have taken in the reverse way, uh, not the uh, product versus reactant. Uh, so, that is, uh, that is why this is positive. So, the changing of this potential uh, will change this concentration if it 3 plus and if it 2 plus and that actually cause the current to flow. So, if you uh, see this kind of behavior and try to understand it, so we are sweeping it from V1 to V2 uh, at a constant rate. So, this is basically a straight line. And the reaction equilibrium they shifts from uh, no conversion, initially uh, there will not be any conversion reaction at uh, uh, say V1 here at this region, it is the current will start to flow when this reaction will eventually take place. So, actually uh, this will uh, uh, yield you a peak here. The potential where this peak current is uh, obtained is uh, this potential where efficiently uh, reduction is going plus going, going to take place F E 3 uh, plus to F E 2 plus is occurring and uh, the peak potential will change uh, for the same redox reaction in a different set of experimental condition. That means, if I change uh, the electrolyte or if I change the electrode, then uh, uh, this peak potential is uh, slightly, it will uh, shift its position. Now, uh, you can increase the sweep rate, uh, if you increase the sweep rate, the peak potential uh, cannot change, increase sweep rate in this direction uh, will only increase the peak current. Uh, but uh, this position will not change. So, the peak current will only increase in this voltage window of V1 and V2. The electrochemical reaction rate change, the reaction becomes faster or slower. If that is the case, then the peak potential shifts. Uh, so, here you can see that if the reaction rate change in this direction, then eventually when it is slowing down, then this potential change. So, in depth info about the electrochemical reaction uh, can be obtained via this linear sweep voltammetry technique. So, we can apply this uh, linear sweep voltammetry in um, both the directions uh, of the potential sweep. Uh, so, initially from V1 to V2 and then back to V1 and this is then called a cyclic voltammetry. Uh, it differentiate between a reversible and irreversible type of electrochemical reaction. So, for example, uh, this is the sweep voltage pattern uh, that we are actually uh, apply across the sample and this is the resultant current as a function of voltage in this voltage window. So, both uh, peak potential, the positive and negative sweep uh, have a voltage of separation as you can see that this voltage of separation is usually daily which is a significant parameter and that defines the nature of this electrochemical reaction. So, if it is a reversible reaction. Uh, both oxidation and reduction takes place, then you get this peak current um, in this direction, in the oxidation direction. You must mention 
which direction is oxidation and which direction is reduction. And uh, if it is an irreversible process, then as expected, you can have this oxidation uh, uh, current peak, but uh, it will be absent uh, in during the reduction uh, reduction case. So you can identify uh, whether it is a reversible or irreversible chemical reaction. So, uh, as I mentioned that uh, this positive and negative uh, sweeps have a voltage separation uh, and that defines the nature of the electrochemical reaction and also the reaction product. For reversible process, uh, this uh, del E value that actually uh, depends on uh, this uh, at uh, del P at C um, is subtracted uh, from this del P at uh, a this one and uh, usually this is uh, 59 millivolt par uh, number of electron. So, the par peak separation that can be used to determine the number of electron that is transferred during the electrochemical reaction. So, for one electron process when the exchange uh, of one electron takes place then the measured uh, value of uh, this daily is uh, usually 59 uh, millivolt and that you can easily estimate as a part of the assignment problem uh, from the Nernst equation. So, uh, for uh, the cyclic voltammetry, uh, the reversible process peak, uh, this I p is related to the potential sweep rate uh, which is uh, uh, defined as uh, nu. And uh, this is uh, through this uh, um, Randall's uh, sepsic uh, relation, uh, which uh, uh, relates this uh, value of I p with several parameters that includes the number of electron, uh, then electrode area, the exposed area of the electrode, and uh, then concentration of the species, um, and also the diffusion coefficient. So, uh, uh, if you consider uh, the electrode active material, uh, electron also uh, flows uh, through it within this uh, electrode material and it is transferred uh, to the current collector uh, depending on whether it is a positive and negative uh, electrode. So, uh, in battery the diffusion coefficient signifies how easily that charge carriers uh, that ions can move through the electrode. So, it is an important parameter to estimate. So, if you consider the lithium ion cell, the diffusion of lithium ions through the electrode materials that determine their electrochemical performance uh, for faster uh, movement of lithium that will lead it to uh, the um, high power discharge or it can be charged at relatively lower time. So, it is important uh, lithium diffusion inside the electrode material. So, cyclic voltammetry can help you to uh, estimate the diffusion coefficient by the equation that I mentioned. So, for a non-faradic process, um, for example, in a capacitor, the CV curve that lacks any anodic or any cathodic peak uh, as obvious because there is no redox reaction is involved. So, the faradic current that arises from actual electrochemical reactions and uh, this capacitive current uh, that arise the, due to the accumulation of the charged pa particulate on the electrode surface. You know about the EDLC behavior um, and you can understand that. Uh, so, the potential of the electrode if it is changed, it is difficult to delineate uh, whether it is uh, faradic uh, and uh, capacitive component uh, from the measured current. Uh, so, from the measured current transient, if you see uh, the decay is much slower uh, in case uh, of faradic component as compared to the uh, capacitive component, but uh, both uh, this mechanism may be operative in a battery material and uh, in some instances uh, it is uh, required to be delineated. So, uh, as I said capacitor is a non-faradic electrochemical process particularly the EDLC type of capacitor. So, no redox reaction is taking place. So, this is a typical example of EDLC behavior 
and only I have considered the strand layer not the diffuse double layer. So, the energy of this uh, kind of EDLC capacitor that can be estimated by this well known uh, half cv square energy can be estimated from its capacitance value and uh, it depends uh, on the applied voltage. The energy is directly dependent on the applied voltage. Uh, I was talking about the delineation of this faradic and capacitive current com contribution in that electrochemical system and we can use the power law which is defined by the decay rate of both the current variants which I showed. So, the total current component is having a capacitive component and faradic component and uh, that can be related with this uh, relation uh, A into V to the power B. So, I uh, is the measured current and I C is the capacitive current and this is the faradic uh, current and uh, this is related uh, with the voltage sweep and A and B which are the constant. Now, this B value uh, that is derived from the decay rate of the current which is shown and uh, typically if B is 0 0.5 then uh, we call this is a faradic process purely faradic process and if it is 1 uh, then it is a, a capacitive process. So, for capacitive current then it is uh, I C is, uh, is A into V and for faradic this is uh, A V to the power half. Uh, putting the value of B. So, the peak current uh, at uh, a particular V sweep rate that now can be defined as I as a function of V at a particular uh, sweep rate. This is sometimes I am calling it V or sometimes nu. Actually, it is nu. I as a function of nu is k 1 into nu plus k 2 into nu to the power half and this can be rewritten as uh, this expression by dividing both sides by nu to the power half and that gives uh, this uh, simple relation. Now, eventually um, this uh, uh, values k 1 and k 2 from this relation can be estimated by plotting this uh, i as a function of nu uh, by nu to the power half versus nu to the power half. So, k 1 is the slope and k 2 is the intercept from this linear plot. A typical linear plot is shown here uh, maintaining this and uh, this basically um, uh, will uh, help me to estimate the value of k 1 and k 2 and then from point by point uh, from a typical uh, uh, CV plot uh, I can get the capacitative and uh, I can get uh, uh, the diffusion control uh, faradic process and uh, the typical example uh, is uh, shown uh, for various um, cases. So, next uh, we will talk about uh, chronopotentiometry and that is a useful tool for characterizing the electrochemical system in an energy storage application uh, including battery and capacitors. So, current at working electrodes it held at a constant and working electrode potential is recorded as a function of time. So, uh, this is a constant current measurement and uh, uh, electrode potential is required. So, for uh, a battery type of material clear cut oxidation and reduction uh, peaks are uh, available which is absent in a purely capacitative uh, material and for a pseudo capacitor where both the uh, fraction are there it is capacitative as well as faradic uh, then uh, you have uh, a broad kind of behavior. Uh, this is due to this basically mixture of this and this. So, if you uh, measure the uh, chronopotentiometric profile that means, the voltage as a function of time then uh, for the typical faradic material uh, uh, under certain condition uh, you know uh, I have already defined that uh, how you can predict the type of this uh, voltage versus time profile um, using thermodynamic consideration. 
So, under certain condition you can get a plateau and uh, for capacitor it is a, a, a more or less uh, uh, steady fall and uh, a mixture between these two you will get in case of a pseudo capacitor material. So, in battery the CV curves uh, they show distinct redox feature and uh, this is energy storage for oxidation and reduction reaction. So, if you consider uh, a single electron exchange reaction in a material M uh, involving a charge carrier C, then um, this part already I uh, explained in one of my earlier lectures. So, I will go a bit fast. Uh, so, this uh, reaction uh, takes place and uh, here M C uh, is a different phase than uh, M. So, it is basically a two phase reaction. So, if you apply the Gibbs phase rule, then degree of freedom is number of component uh, minus number of phase and this 2 plus 2 is coming one uh, due to pressure and uh, another one temperature. So, this degree of freedom uh, represents the number of thermodynamic parameter that is necessary to define this electrochemical system, uh, particularly temperature, pressure and also potential. So, for this reaction, this particular reaction, uh, you know that a component uh, is 2, m and c are there, phase is also 2, uh, m is there and m c is there. So, degree of freedom is 2. So, the temperature and pressure, if you fix it, then no additional degree of freedom is left. And therefore, uh, for this type of uh, reaction, it has 2 component, 2 phase degree of freedom 2 at fixed temperature and pressure there is no additional degree of freedom is left and this means that all the thermodynamic function including the potential that should remain constant uh, once um, the concentration of the charge carrier change during the electrochemical reaction. So, you get a flat kind of plateau for this two phase reaction. Now, if you consider uh, chronopotentiometry measurement for capacitors, uh, then the charge carrier they basically accumulates on the electrode surface. So, there is no new phase that forms. So, this relation is uh, um, the similar type of relation, relation, but this M C has two components M and C and one phase that is only M there is no two phase condition is there. So, degree of freedom is 3. So, apart from pressure and temperature, there is one additional degree of freedom that needs to be specified for this electrochemical system. So, in the potential change basically linearly with the concentration of the charge carrier. Therefore, for the purely capacitative behavior, you get a, a straight line kind of so, uh, now the uh, concept for uh, this voltage transient, voltage versus time uh, for uh, at least uh, the battery and capacitor type material uh, is uh, clear to you. Now, uh, although I will talk about different types of electrode material uh, where uh, various types of uh, reaction takes place, not everywhere it is uh, intercalation type or solid solution type. So, uh, in those cases uh, you can see uh, I have uh, tabulated most probable case. In solid solution case uh, you can work it out it is a one phase uh, reaction mode and uh, degree of freedom is 3 and it is capacitor type. Similarly, intercalation uh, this is also one phase that will yield capacitor type. Now, when intercalation with some kind of conversion uh, reaction is involved. So, then it is two phase and that the same thing applies for uh, pure conversion and pure alloying type of electrode material. Then degree of freedom is 2 uh, in all these three latter case and they behave as a battery type of material. When I will talk about this electrode material separately and uh, correlate with their respective voltage profile, then this concept will become more clearer to you. Now, electrochemical titration that is an important tool that gives you uh, quantitative information about the insertion reaction 
um, type electroactive component. So, usually there are two general type one is galvanostatic intermittent titration technique which is shown in the upper panel uh, which is uh, uh, given uh, abbreviated as GIT and uh, the lower one is potential static intermittent titration technique. So, in each of this case uh, a stepwise measurement of the electrochemical titration curve that is accompanied by an evaluation of the kinetic behavior after each step. So, one can basically um, obtain both thermodynamic and kinetic information as a function of electrode composition. That means, uh, the extent of the reaction uh, that can be determined by this two technique. So, in GIT uh, you uh, apply a current pulse um, and uh, measure voltage as a function of time. So, time dependence of the potential after applying a current step uh, is measured and uh, this also allows to estimate the chemical diffusion coefficient by this relation, where the term this tau s uh, this tau. Uh, uh, that is in uh, uh, this uh, is the duration of the current pulse and uh, del E s uh, that is uh, steady state voltage change uh, during uh, uh, during this uh, uh, current uh, pulse and uh, this del E t that is the voltage change during the constant current pulse. So, this part and uh, remaining fall and then the steady state part. So, that uh, uh, can be measured simultaneously and putting this uh, value uh, one can estimate the chemical diffusion coefficient uh, for a lithium and full cell. So, this is a typical example uh, taken from uh, a commercial lithium ion cell uh, NMC graphite. So, the current uh, uh, is uh, kept fixed at C by 10 rect. Uh, you know that 1 C means discharge it taking place is 1 hour. So, C by 10 is 10 hours it takes. So, it is a slow process and each step is uh, composed of a 10 minutes of discharge charge uh, pulse, which is followed by a 10 minutes of rest. Uh, well, no current is passing through the cell and voltage range is kept 3.6 volt that is the open circuit potential to 4.2 volt uh, during the charging and then during the discharging it was discharged till 2.8 volt. So, uh, you apply uh, the current pulse and then uh, you see uh, in this uh, particular uh, region and then you measure uh, the value of uh, this E s uh, here this uh, delta E t and the uh, IR drop uh, the, the drop due to internal resistance. And uh, this uh, uh, values are put in the earlier relation to estimate the uh, chemical potential. Uh, finally, using uh, PIT uh, we can also determine the chemical diffusion coefficient. So, here a potential pulse is applied with a fixed potential increment between the pulse uh, similar to that we talked about in C V and L S V case. The total range of potential sweep is within the voltage range of the electrochemical system. So, that voltage window is important. Then the logarithm of the resulting current uh, response uh, in a potential pulse is uh, plot, uh, this is plotted versus time. So, this current transient is plotted and the diffusion coefficient uh, is proportional uh, to the slope, we will show, show the actual measurement. And uh, this uh, d value uh, diffusion coefficient that uh, depends on um, the L uh, which is the length of uh, the electrode active material and it depends on the area of the electrode. So, if you see the example uh, in a commercial lithium ion battery which is again uh, 
nickel manganese cobalt based uh, positive electrode and graphite based negative electrode. Each potential pulse uh, that comprises uh, 15 minutes of applied potential and uh, that followed uh, by 15 minutes of relaxation. Um, between each pulse, uh, a 20 millivolt increment uh, is applied. So, progressively uh, this increase. And then from the current pulse, um, you can see a particular current pulse, uh, the linear part. Um, this linear part is identified and the diffusion coefficient is proportional to the slope of this uh, log I versus A versus T curve. So, uh, this part uh, of the lecture that is mostly taken by uh, the book by Bard as a reference book and uh, also book by Huggins uh, advanced batteries and uh, uh, basically uh, um, application database of uh, uh, various uh, uh, manufacturers of this uh, type of potentiostat, galvanostat, metrom is one of them and Gamli instrument is another. So, the application notes uh, which is there in their site uh, can be uh, quite useful. So, uh, in this particular lecture uh, relevant to the study of energy materials, uh, popular electrochemical probing tools are introduced and which we will keep on using when I will define the case studies, then uh, basically this will be more clear. Linear sweep voltammetry is used to estimate the stability window of the electrolyte mostly and reversible electrode uh, reactions in lithium ion cell uh, that is investigated using cyclic voltammetry. Uh, then we talked about how to delineate the capacitative and uh, faradaic part in a battery material from the cyclic voltam voltam voltamogram taken at different sweep rate and galvanostatic charge discharge characteristics to measure the capacity that is introduced and finally, uh, this galvanostatic intermittent titration technique and potentiostatic intermittent titration technique is uh, illustrated how to uh, estimate the uh, chemical diffusion coefficient. Thank you for your attention.